Mm. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. citizens panel in just a little while but uh, let's go out and do a call that we won't do every uh, I'm, I can't even talk today uh, that we do every couple of weeks ladies and gentlemen out there in Oregon it's Ronnie Bennett once every two weeks we check in with her and see what's happening with old farts uh, with what? old farts old farts okay yes yeah. she has a blog called as time as time time goes by dot net and yes. it's a Without blog. No ads in front of it. No, no, a, no, no ads. It's not no ads. It's just time goes by. Time goes by. Dot net. And uh, uh, it's all about getting older. And it's really very good. I mean, even if you're not getting older, uh, you want to read it to see what life's going to be like soon. Anyway, how are you, Ronnie? <laughs> I'm all right. It's been a rough week. It's been really, really not a good week since. Not a, sorry, not a good week. week. Well, wait a minute. It's only month. It's only two. Well, let's see, Tuesday. No, I mean all of last week. Oh, I see. Okay. Months. It's been it's been a very very rough week. I have a, a drug that I have to take before I eat every meal. Yeah. It replaces the enzymes that my body doesn't make anymore because blah blah blah. You the know, pancreas. Blah blah, blah blah blah. Yeah. And um, so uh. You know, this is, uh, I forgot to turn off my email program, and it's going to keep doing this to us. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about it. Um, and uh, and if I, I, I can't eat if I don't take it, because it causes, food then causes pain. Yeah. So I was running out. I've been taking it for two years since the surgery. Yeah. I just take it in, and they renew it, you know? Right. If we're out of refills, they call the place for me, and they get it done at right. the pharmacy. This time... My insurance company wanted to know something about the dosage because I get a lot of pills. Because even if I decide at 10 o'clock to have a snack, I have to take a pill before a right, snack. Right, right. <clears throat> so you use more than three a day. So sometimes. And this went on for a week that they would call a medical place and nobody would ever get back to them or not with the right information. And then I tried calling several days, a little, and somebody would say, I will track down the right person and have them call the pharmacy. It never happened. And my, meanwhile, the pills are disappearing. What do I do? Stop eating? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, so um, by Friday, it still hadn't been resolved, uh, which means I gave up any snacks I wanted because I needed the pills for main meals. And finally, yesterday, I got the right thing. I called. I, I I called the. There's such a thing as a patient complaint center. I'm pretty sure they call it something nicer than that, but that's what it means. Yeah. <clears throat> and I called there, and the lady there took care of it. I don't know why I didn't think of that to begin with. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so I got my pills. Well, there, um, there are all kinds yeah. of things that they do, like pre-authorizations for certain drugs and, uh, you know, whatever. And it's a pain in the ass. All you want to do is have your medicine that will take care of your particular problem. You know, what can you do? Yeah. And I still have these body aches and pains that wear me out by, you know, noon or 1 o'clock. So. Yeah. Well, I, I get up and I'm tired and I'm tired for the rest of the day. So, you know. Uh, you know, but uh, I'm, I don't have a reason for that. You do. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, there's a reason that I named a couple of, of blog posts of uh, cancer, chemo, or old age. Uh, things go wrong and you don't know what caused it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And, and I'm sure that happens even if you're not doing chemo and such, just old bodies you know getting tired and things stop working right yeah 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 so anyway uh uh let's let's uh you said you had a few things you wanted to talk about today yeah i'm just i wanted to ask you about um i'm going to say it my way uh, trump's racist speech at the four women yeah yeah 
Yeah. Did you see all that? Uh, yes, yes. I. It's pretty hard to believe, isn't it? Um, and he said, you know, that the next one after everybody complained, he said, yeah, but a lot of people agree with me. <laughs> no kidding. No, you know what? No, here, here's what he says. He always says that lots of people agree with me, and that's his justification. But lots yeah. of people agreeing with you isn't that all people agree with you, right. you know. And it's, it's he always also, he, years you know, be before change when a president, depending on how a president repeats things, presents things, and repeats things, mm -hmm. also sets the tone of how we speak. And if, you know, everybody speaks like Trump now. What do you mean? We're all speaking. We're all speaking fluent. Trump. We're all speak, speaking fluent gibberish. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, the thing is that that. Um, uh, uh, to begin with, they say, well, no, he's not a racist. He has a black person in his cabinet. <laughs> I have a black friend. <laughs> you know, oh, really? You have a black person in your cabinet? Okay, that makes you not racist? You know, when you're telling anybody the, the racist trope of, why don't you go back where you came from? You know? I mean, I, as a Jew, I even heard that when I was growing up from racist yes, kids. when we were young, and the go back to where you came from was very big in the 60s, um, 60s civil rights movement. Yeah, well, OAC o o said that it means I'll have to go back to the Bronx. Yeah. You know, I don't think he knew that three of those women were born here, because he doesn't read. And it's not like when you're giving a speech, you say, hey, I was born in America, you know? Um and I think he didn't know when he said that. I mean, how else would you say it? And the other one, how else would you the, say that? the other one, the Somalian, is uh, is uh, a, a, a citizen of the United States of America. A citizen, yeah. So, I mean, you don't say that to somebody who's a citizen, you know? I mean, that's right. I mean, if how would they feel any different than if somebody stopped you or me in the street? and told us to go back to where we came from. We're here, what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, these, this woman came from Somalia at age 12, I think, because her yes. parents were fleeing the country. Yes. You know, uh, I, I, just such a dumb man and just so terrible and so racist and so white. You yeah, know. that's what it was, so white. Yes. I mean, I, you know, I feel almost ashamed to be white. You know, get that way with people like him, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, he's he's bespeaking uh, a a he's really this is the most racist he's ever gotten. This is overt. Yes. Okay. This is overt. This is way across the line. Unless that guy, what his name is, Kevin McCarthy, who's um, I can't remember if he's a senator or a representative who was defending him this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I I couldn't even see how they could defend him. Uh, but they were all white people up there, <laughs> you know. True. And to a white person, that isn't racist, <clears throat> you know, except to this white person and that white person. Uh, the other thing is that Kellyanne Conway, the White House, some, I don't know what she does there. Uh, she she does doesn't something. either. Um, she defied the subpoena that was issued in regard, you know, her being accused of Hatch Act, mm -hmm. um, of, of not... You know what I mean. Um, she didn't show up for a, for her subpoena yesterday at the committee, and she said that Trump told her not to go. And there's going to be a vote probably this late today. This is Tuesday. We're recording this Tuesday, the yeah. 16th, uh, to hold her in contempt of Congress. They always do this. These Democrats. I'm really tired of it. That. I, if, if you're convicted of um, of defying a subpoena, mm -hmm. it requires a jail sentence. And I, and the Democrats just have just let everybody go. They don't do anything. It's a slap on the wrist. It's not even a slap on a wrist. What does anybody in the Trump administration care about being, um, you know, condemned by Congress but keeping their job? <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's going to happen again. I just don't get why they don't do anything. I understand why the Republicans who are afraid of Trump condemning them don't do it. I, it makes them chicken and I don't like them, but um, 
<laughs> but I don't get the Democrats. Well, you know, all. God forbid he should win the next election, <clears throat> and they have to deal with him, and that's what they think. They don't want to have to deal with Trump. They're afraid he is such a bully that they're afraid of being bullied by him. Who? Who's the they you're the, talking the, about? The Republicans that you're talking about. Oh no, they just don't. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they don't want they, they they don't want to be bullied by. I understand him. that that that, but my, I don't understand the Democrats though. Yeah, makes no sense that they, they vote to condemn somebody and then go on with normal business. They never arrest them, they never hold a trial, they never put them in jail. Yeah, and I don't understand. I don't. You know, I, they would. I don't understand it either. Uh, but you know, I mean. That, that, that's the ineffectiveness of the Democrats. I mean... That's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> it's, a party, it's a party of the wimpy, you know? Um, I guess so. I guess so. And I don't know. I got to say to the Democrats, what's worse, being like a Republican and falling into lockstep with Trump or being a Democrat and being so weak against Trump that you don't go ahead and say, okay, Kellyanne, you're spending the night in jail? Well, the result is the same, isn't it? Or close enough. Well, pretty much, it's exactly what pr Trump is counting on. Yeah. You know, so. Um, I want to lighten this up a little bit. Okay, let's lighten it up. These are our daily troubles and tribulations of our country. But a couple of nights ago, mm -hmm. uh, you had a blackout. Yes, we did. Um, you were far enough away, I think it didn't affect you at all. We home. didn't even know what had happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If you, and if you had TV on, there was what looked like a 14-year-old girl reporting from near Rockefeller Center mm -hmm. where everything was dark. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, this happens when you get old. Even people up until about 30 look like they're high schoolers. You know? Yeah, right. And this girl is is out there, and she right behind her in the shot was Radio City Music Hall. Yeah. And she kept referring to it as Radio City Hall. Just every time she did, if I was only half paying attention, I would sit up. She's probably not from New York. The name of that place. <laughs> <laughs> and then she pointed across the street to the building right across the side street. I think it's 51st from uh, from Radio City. Yeah. And um, and she said, and that's 30 Rock. No, it's not. No, 30 Rock <laughs> is. <laughs> 30 Rock is on the other side of Radio City Music Hall. And it just it just makes you Wait crazy. Wait a minute, now, is she working for NBC, this woman? Yes. Then she should know where fucking 30 Rock is. She has to go to work there every day. <laughs> oh, just thank God. Listen, but about the blackout. Yeah. It. Well, I was amused and interested to know that it occurred on the same day that the 1977 blackout That's happened. That's correct. Do you remember that blackout? Uh, let me see here. Or was I was I here? I'm trying to remember. Was I here? I guess I was still here. Yes, of course I was. I'm going to recount that day to you. Oh, I remember it because we were somewhere and we were waiting for our lights to go back on, and we were the last, almost the last department for the lights to go back on. Well, that's not what the story is about. Oh, okay. What's the story about? Um, I was sitting at home. Uh -huh. um, you know, doing whatever at the computer. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the computer went off, and the radio had been on. Did we have a computer then? I'm trying to remember if we had a computer then. No, we didn't. So this is a later blackout. Oh, the later blackout, the one where you lived in the apartment that you had to go downstairs for, right? Where I spent the well, evening. <coughs> well, you d wait, let me tell the story. Okay, go tell the story. But whatever the year was, whichever blackout, yeah. I'm, t I'm really sorry it wasn't the same day. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I'm just sitting there at home on the computer. The computer stops. The radio stops. Any lights I had on stopped. And I knew what it was. We've had blackouts before. Mm -hmm. So I, who knows how long they'll last. So I checked the fridge, and I went to the corner bodega, and bought up bread and other things that didn't need to be refrigerated if it lasted a long time. Yeah. Uh, before they were all gone and mm -hmm. brought those home. And now what? Nothing works, and we're so accustomed even then to our electronics. So then there's a knock at the door. And I've forgotten the order, so I can't, doesn't matter. I go to the door and I open it up, and there is Stanhope. Your friend man that I once yeah. worked with and dated for a long time. Mm -hmm. 
And he was living in Brooklyn then, which I hadn't known. And he said it was a long walk back to Brooklyn. Could he stay with me for the duration? Sure, come on in. So he comes in and we're getting settled. And there's another knock at my door. And I go there, and it's you. <laughs> and you no, know, now I have to preface this with, um, I have always been very care- careful to keep the men in my life separate from one another, <laughs> even if we're no longer dating, mm-hmm. but friendly. And there was nothing I can do. I mean, you said, I live way up on you know, I don't, four hundred and seventy seventh Street or something, and. Can I come in and stay? Okay, come in. Stanhope, Alex, Alex Stanhope. Well, you guys started telling. He, you have to know that he's a television news producer who's produced some of the most famous things you've ever seen on Cronkite's News. And you're a radio talk show host. Mm-hmm. Well, now you're telling, both of you are telling war stories and trying to one-up each other. <laughs> that stopped. When it got nighttime, we went out and walked around the neighborhood just to see what it was like. And yeah. that ice cream at that place was giving away their ice cream because what are you going to do? You can't freeze it anymore. Right. And uh, <clears throat> and we did that and came back. I got tired. You guys are telling more stories again. So I went in the bedroom and went to bed. I wake up a normal time later, and you guys are still up telling war stories. Yeah, it I had a nice time with Stan Hope. I had a nice time with him that night. <laughs> I really did. I, I remember it always. <laughs> well, I wasn't so sure you guys should both be in the same room together. Well, we, we got along okay, you know. And we didn't, I don't think we even <laughs> talked about you. So, you know, I mean. Uh... <laughs> That's what I was worried about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, um, it was about. When was it? Nine, uh, when was it? Uh, it had to be like 2002 or something like that. Because I was working. I was working I, over. No, I was I working. I thought it was 1977, but you're right. I wouldn't have had a computer yet. Yeah, right. Uh, the one in the one that happened, uh, the uh, 77. Uh, I, I don't think we were together any longer, and I don't know where I was. But I, no, w- I was outside the city. Maybe I was at my friend Shecky's. I can't remember. And I, uh, I kept calling around trying to figure out if our apartment had gotten its lights back because they said they were restoring, you know. And they were doing it in a circle, an inward spiral circle. And you know where the end of the spiral <laughs> was? In the middle. <laughs> my apartment was the last apartment to get its electricity. Ah, uh, well. Yeah. It's always hot when blackouts happen, too, so you're just miserable. Yeah, well, this one, I don't know what they still they haven't said what caused it, but it was a bunch of relays that went to protect each other. Oh, something. I don't know what caused it. I, I, I wouldn't understand if they told me, I'm sure, you know. Yeah. Um, also, have you heard this story that more than a million people have signed up to storm Area 51? Yes, I saw that. Yes. <laughs> We need a laugh in these times, you know? Well, it turns out the guy who started this little <coughs> let's go get these people. He started it as a joke. Well, he started it as a joke, and finally when he saw it was being taken too seriously, he said, it's only a joke, folks. You know, because <laughs> the government was but get, get, the government was ready to muster up the army and the, whoever well, to guard I the place. Read, um, they said that the army... The army was there, you know, and and prepared for them. Um, And it's supposed to be just an Air Force training area. So, you know, I don't know anything about how those rumors got started or anything. But one news story I read made reference to those things in the sky that pilots have been seeing in the past month or so. Yeah. And so there must be aliens at Area 51, I think, is what that person was trying to say. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Think there are aliens at, at Area 51? Uh, 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 from what I understand, the only thing about Area 51 and the reason it was so secretive is that they were doing some secret work there, but it didn't have to do with aliens. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, you know. You know how easily everything about uh, all of the, the political stuff in the gets um, 
uh, it gets leaked if it's if it's worth knowing. Yeah, all of these gets leaked. Right. If there were aliens at Area Fifty One, it would have been leaked by now. Well, here's decades. here's the thing. Uh, um, I have always felt that the belief in UFOs is very egotistical. You know, this is a rather vast universe. We are but a mere speck in that universe. And the notion that we are so important that they found us and they are coming to see us is really quite egotistical. The fact well, is, they would probably look at us, us and go, hmm, those are roaches, aren't they? You know. I mean, you don't know because you don't know what aliens are like. Well. Maybe aliens look like roaches. Well, you, we, but we also have a concept of what an alien is and that they have some kind of uh, biological similarity to us. And they don't. Uh, they would, they, uh, we, so why should they? There is life elsewhere universe. in the universe, but it may be plant life or it may be sea life or it may be algae or bacteria or whatever, but it may not be what we've evolved to. Maybe we're the most evolved species in the universe. I, we don't know oh, that. That be a shame. Oh, well, God. if we are, if we are, the universe is in for a bad time. Yes, it is. You know, I mean, that's pretty terrible. Um. But uh, I just, I thought more than a million people, they must be really tired of politics. <laughs> well, you know, I was watching, I was watching this thing they did on the BBC in England called The Planets, in which they deal with each of the planets and what, what life might be there and what life might not be there and how it was formed, and when it was formed and all of that. And they're talking in terms of four billion years ago. <laughs> and I'm going, I am such an insignificant speck in the overall picture. And so is everybody else sitting on this big blue marble, okay? That we it's, should It's what it's what uh, Michael Tyson what yeah. is his full name Michael he's yeah. got three yeah. names. And he's we are all stardust. Isn't that it, lovely? It, well we we are probably. We are for sure. Yeah. But isn't that a lovely way to put it? Yeah. Yeah. We are uh, all stardust. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe that's what we go back to is being stardust. I think there, I was wondering the other day if there's a little corner of the universe where I belong and will be comfortable after I go. It might be. If there's such a thing. We don't know? know. Let us know, will you? <laughs> as, as everybody has said to let every dying know. person you know, ever. <laughs> you know, let, let us know. Send, send back a message of some sort. You know. Well, you remember, you remember, table. you remember what Houdini's wife did. She went around. They went went around for years debunking uh, mystics. You know, people who would say, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I, see, I see your uh, your relatives. Yes, they're up there. They love you. They're sending a message." And then, then somehow Houdini would prove them to be fake. And so when he died, she he before before he died, they agreed that if he could possibly get some kind of message back to her, he would. And he never did. No, okay. Of uh, but for years, she would go to these seances <laughs> and continue to disprove them. Uh, and, and none of them ever, you know, all of, all of them were debunked completely. But if Houdini couldn't get back here, the world's greatest escape artist, I don't know if we, got an, if we have that ability. You know. Well, you see, he'd spent his whole career escaping rather than returning to whatever he escaped I see. That's from. a very, oh, you're so good. You're so good at that. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he, uh, he, he I think he kept trying to reach his mother because he loved his mother and his mother had died. And they were constantly going to these seances. And, they, you know, some guy behind a curtain going boo, making noises and things like that. And, and literally disproving them. And they hated him. They, they got to the point where they wouldn't even do a seance Who for hated him. hated it? The, the, uh, the, the, the mystics, the seance doers, you know, whatever you call them. Crystal ball gazers. I uh, don't know. So, don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, 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 you're, you're feeling okay? Yeah, I've got these pain problems I'm still working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hair, yeah so. And I'm letting my hair grow rather than, <coughs> excuse me, shave it down. But, um, you know, there's a big part of me that loves that I don't have to do anything with hair in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also can't go. 
<laughs> well, I never, I, I don't know that I ever did. You always that. wore your hair kind of um, short, but it, but there's still it still takes work. Yeah, and um, there's a every Tuesday, uh, my blog post is from a story that a reader has written and mm. sent in. Yeah, and today's is by Anne Burek Wright. Weiss, who lives in New York City in the village, mm -hmm. and um, and it's called My Comfort Zone, and she's talking about as she gets older, she only pretty much does what makes her comfortable. Yeah. And I would, I think that it's a wonderful thing to let go of having to do your hair, and of course all bald men know that, you don't have to comb your hair. Well, well certainly, certainly we will put on the list of, uh, of good things about cancer, that. Okay. <laughs> got chemo and you won't have to do your hair anymore. <laughs>
uh, you have Phil Meyer the last time, so he's in the sixth spot. We need to fill the fifth spot. Let me uh, now do this, okay, and everybody can see what I'm talking about. There they are. That's the beginning of a citizen panel for us this evening. And uh, Phil, you're making a lot of noise. Oh, sorry about that. I'm on the iPad trying to... Why, why are you on the iPad? I'm in Denver. Oh, why are you in Denver? Uh, I'm uh, preparing to drink the Kool-Aid and wear the Fez at the carpet convention. Oh, I see. Okay, it's the Sons of the Desert meeting? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You we're all going to get our edibles and uh, go back and sell carpet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're in Denver. Yeah, you can go buy edibles there. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Well, you don't I think do. You can buy them in California too. Well, of course, uh, of course. Yeah, I haven't done that. Well, you don't do pot, do you? No. Nah. Why? Might help. Uh, Might help, Phil. Yeah, I, I think it's a waste of time. You know, uh, I, I don't like. Uh, I don't like just wasting time like that. Well, what do you mean wasting time? What do you when got? You're stoned, you, when you're stoned, you're 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 nowhere near as aware or as productive. Yeah, yeah. It lets you it's it lets you chill out. Well, if I want to chill, if I want to chill out, I'll go ride my motorcycle or go scuba diving. You know. Yeah. Some people some people have been known to do their best work when they were young. Yeah. That they think they think they well, do their best work. Uh, my 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 old fr my old friend Bill Hicks, while he was alive, said that um, if you if you know if you love the music you're listening to, if you love the artwork you're looking at, just remember all those people were high when they created that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you know I mean, there was uh, a lot of there was a lot of music uh, during the seventies that you had to be high just to listen I mean, to it. Well, I mean, you know, if uh, if Warren Zevon had never started drinking, would you even know who he was? You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, well, if Ray Charles wasn't a heroin addict, <laughs> would he yeah. have been as good as he was? In fact, when he quit heroin, he got lousy. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm not telling people go out and do heroin and you're going to be like Ray Charles. Very few people are, but you know. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll run right out and get some. <laughs> well, it would, wouldn't hurt you, Phil. Wouldn't yeah, hurt. really. Well, I have this vape. Uh, I have this vape. I do one toke out of it every night. Put me to sleep. Yeah. Lately, I haven't been taking, uh, haven't been taking any Xanax or any pills that make me drowsy. Uh, just doing a little bit of the pot, and that puts me right to sleep. And I sleep a solid eight hours. Hmm. You know. So that's you know that's good. Uh, well. Well, I, I just start talking to my girlfriend, and uh, uh, I fall asleep, or I just put uh, the re the rerun of Gabnet on, and I'm out like a light. Yeah. Well, I do have a problem. <laughs> I do have a problem with night terrors, but then yeah. that's because I turn over and I look, and Marjorie's there. But you know, it's uh, <laughs> oh, I'm be so lucky. I'm sorry, Marjorie. I didn't mean. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Right, Scott. Oh. Well, here comes the divorce. Um, <laughs> Right. You know. Who gets the apartment? Huh? Who gets the apartment? I don't know who's going to get the apartment because I'm telling you, this thing just keeps going on and on. Today they had another meeting, and you know yeah. what was decided at the meeting today? You were going to be billed four thousand dollars. No, no, that it's going to trial. Oh, really? Yeah, that it's going to trial. Uh, it's a that's a scam. They're, they're just just just. Uh, I uh, don't think so. These guys uh -huh. are just they're 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 stupid. Uh, they're really really assholes. I mean, the, these are the the hi there, Tony. Uh, these are the you know the it's 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 not us. It's it's the other two of them that keep fighting with each other and saying we now we want to go to trial. Yeah. Well, you know, if trial. You go to get, trial, it could cost you thirty grand. Well, that's what it's going to cost me. Yeah. You know, I'm listen. I'm so we're so far invested into this thing to the tune of about fifty-five grand. That you know what we're going to back out now. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you know and you, then you're in it. What uh, you know, a thousand a month uh, for the amount of time. You've yeah, been but there. now if we add another thirty thousand to it, it ain't getting so cheap. You know. 
No. The only and good thing, the only, gotta, the only thing. You got to get the money from the guy. Well, the, uh, well, I would. If we had settled, we wouldn't have. If we, if yeah. this thing goes to a trial, we can. You know, we can say we want our, uh, our, our money for our, for our uh, defense and so on. We're taking it from a from a loan that Marjorie has on her on her house on her apartment, um, a home equity loan that she can use for anything she wants to. By the way, um, and it, it so we're using it for this. But you know, I mean, if all of, if then the the uh, the landlord loses, which he's going to big time. Okay. Yeah. He can appeal it. Right, and, and, and an appeal costs you even more money. And my question is, how you know we can't quit, so we're gonna have to go out yeah. and borrow the money, or beg and steal the money from somebody, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, can you get this attorney to do it for a portion of the winnings? No, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Nobody will take it that way. No, it's not. They're not gonna do it pro bono. And you don't not, not pro bono. Well, they I mean, take, excuse uh, me, excuse well, me, on on contingency. contingency. You don't want you, you don't want a lawyer on contingency. You want a lawyer you're paying who just works his ass off for you, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it, 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 you know, I mean, it it's, you know, it, it, hopefully we'll be just fine, you know. Uh, and let me uh, I gotta go to the next uh, thing we got here. Let me see here. What do we got? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What do I need? I need, I got six, I got eight. Okay, eight, so eight. I need to, I, and well, we already lost. Tony went somewhere. Let me see here. <laughs> he went to massage his mother's feet. He's there. I can help her in the bathroom. Hold on a second. Yeah? She got the wheel. What, you're taking your mother to the bathroom? Oh, I can hardly wait for that. Take oh, us boy. with you. Yeah, hello there, Kevin. How are you? Let me see here. Let me go there. There we go. There are a bunch of you guys. All right, got uh, got room for another one if anybody wants to call. Uh, anyway, so you know, I mean, I, it, you know, I mean, this thing. It, it, the question is, it's too too late to back out now. Let me put it that way. You know, and there is a payoff for us in the end, but it's you know, it's a it's a big big deal. You know. Now you see the problem with the payoff is that you'd be going after the guy you you uh, rented from right well no and we're going the, we're going the guy after, you, we're going the guy, after, we're going we're go, no, we're, we're not we're, we're not we're going after him yes but we're also going after the landlords right what did the landlords do to you uh we believe they they knew what was going on and they did nothing about it so therefore they're complicit uh, it's going to be a tough one. No, it's not a tough one. Under New York law, it's very easy to prove. Really? Yeah. Okay. The fact well, that the we land... the fact that we moved in, yeah. and the super who is the on-site representative of the landlords, he helped you open the gate, helped us up, knew we were moving in, and nothing was done about it. Okay. That's because no. you told you Phil, said that they Phil, could Phil, are you are you a lawyer? A year. Are you a lawyer? I know lawyers. Well, my lawyer says <laughs> this makes them I got friends. This to makes the them this makes them quite complicit in the whole situation. Okay. You know that they were aided and abetted the uh, the illusory tenancy of of, you know, the, uh, uh, of the other Jeff guy. sleeps with a lawyer. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course she probably doesn't do landlord tenant law, which is a very uh, big I not particularly. <laughs> Which is, 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 is specialized here in New York City, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, it's just, the, it, uh, here's what I hate about the law, okay, <clears throat> is, okay, who are we? We are people of limited resources, let's say. I mean, we're lucky that she has an apartment that we can borrow money on and so on and mm -hmm. pay for this, okay? Uh, but nevertheless... Because this keeps going on and on, and I mean, it went, first we were in uh, depositions, and then we were in, in, in uh, and this went on over six years, right? Depositions, and then uh, uh, mediation, and then uh, mediation before a judge, and then now this. 
I mean, one thing after another, after another, after another. I mean, we've spent fifty-five thousand dollars so far, and there, the judge, there should be uh, there should be something in the law. There should be something in the law that makes this simpler for the for for people who are just victims of the situation. Last time, uh, uh, last time you were excused from the no, from the thing the, the, because the, one the judge today. said that you were the yeah. victim. And the so one forth. today, yes, but that was a mediation judge. Now we're right. going before oh, another judge different, altogether. Different judge, because yeah. maybe they said to themselves, "Look, it looks bad for us." So we should ask for jury trial and see if we can, you know, maybe convince a no, jury. No, the reason that, can't convince uh, that but judge. you see, that's not the case, Phil. No. The reason there's a jury trial is because these two assholes can't agree with each other. Okay, we're sitting there. I I described it to my lawyer as we're kind of like uh, two people, two two people watching a tennis match, and we have a bet, and we want to see if we're going to collect on the bet. You know, because we're really, we're just sitting there like, you know, the children of a divorce where the parents are arguing with each other, you know, and then we want to see who wins and who loses. And probably we as an, as individuals will win. I mean, our lawyer says, you know, mm -hmm. you're lucky it's going to trial because you're probably going to get more out of a trial than you would out of a, out of a settlement. You have to. Yeah. So. He said their risk is higher, but these guys are, uh, you know, they have deep pockets and they're, uh, they're, you know, they're, uh, they're, well, they're slum lords. Okay. Do they know how old you are? Uh, I have an. Uh, they probably have an idea. Okay. Or they did some research, maybe a wiki page or something. Uh, the reason I say that is they may be sure. just uh, hoping that uh, you, uh, you know, you don't live out the uh, the lawsuit it doesn't ma it doesn't matter we're not their prime concern uh, well no. if you went away the other guy could settle no just, no no they can't Remember. settle that's why we're going to court Phil that's the reason why there's a trial is because well, they these can't settle because they're gonna owe you because they can't settle no. okay right. so somebody's they gonna got, have to pay some, uh, somebody's gonna have to pay somebody and then we're gonna swoop in and grab whatever yeah. somebody gets you know, I mean, it, it, it's it's a three-way deal here, Phil. Yeah, you at know. the end of the day, Marjorie's still around. She can carry it on. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. you, it ain't going away. You assume I'm going to die before her. Well, uh, she's only like what? Uh, no, I'm just going yeah. on by what Phil said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, know. you know, I mean. Um, well, you keep making comments on Wait a minute. You, 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 before her. You're breaking up on us a lot there, uh, Charlie. Charlie. Oh. Could you could you hang up and just call right back in? Sure. Yeah, do yeah. that. We may, you might get a better uh, a better uh, bandwidth situation. <clears throat> Either that or move yourself closer to the uh, to the to the router. I don't know. But no, all I'm saying, Phil, is it's 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 not us. It's it's them. And if we were not part of this whole thing, they'd still be going to court and fighting each other. Yeah. Okay? George Costanza said that. It's not you. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's the uh, that, that that's the problem. So you know, are you there, Charlie? There we go. You uh, talk to us now. Uh -huh. Y'all are crystal clear to me. So yeah. Where, where's your router? It's in the living room on the other side of that wall. No, oh, maybe that's one of the reasons it breaks up a lot, you know. But uh, anyway, um, try, you, what you should do sometime is hardwire uh, your router into the into your into your machine from the other room. I, I do that all the time. I I have nothing but hardwiring around the house. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi works fine, but it's got you've got to have a good signal, you know. So, but anyway, um, yeah, I want to live long enough to see this thing taken care of. But you know, how many years will I have once it is settled? I mean, I see that if they went to to uh, appellate court, if they went to appeals, that's yeah. two years down the line. Okay. Yeah. The well, trial, uh, the trial as it is now, is in September. Yeah. Well, 
is there a possibility you'll get a lease if they uh, uh, on the first trial, and then uh, if it, if the judgment goes to appeal, you're goes, still if in. If it goes to appeal, then we're not going to be doing. We we won't get a, a lease. No. Until they appeal it, but I mean, you know, as to whether they appeal it or not is how much their damage has been, you know, yeah. and how much the more they want to commit to it. You yeah, know? I, I'm just worried that the guy that rented you the place has already hidden all of his assets. Well, I, that we're and... worried. About, we're worried about that too. Yeah. You know, because uh, we, it, we, my lawyer he said, because if we and, try to get know. money out of him and he goes into bankruptcy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. all for naught. It's all for naught, yeah. Right. So, you know, I mean, although I don't know if you if you go into bankruptcy, if you can avoid a court settlement. Yes. Uh, the only thing you can't avoid is payroll taxes and sales tax. No, but I'm wondering <laughs> if... Student if, loans. I'm, Student one, loans. I'm wondering yeah. if, if you're solvent and all of a sudden you, uh, you, you're found guilty of something. And uh, you you lose in court if you suddenly can go into bankruptcy at that point. Well, you could, but you can't hide your assets uh, in the for the bankruptcy. That's illegal. But if he's had five years to hide his assets, uh, then there's a settlement or a judgment. Yeah. Well, and, we we, and, we were we were, we were arguing that we bet that his home in Connecticut, right, mm -hmm. isn't in his name. Right, it's probably in his wife's name, but you can yeah. find that out very quickly. Well, you know, if you, but if if you can prove that, that was done as a canard to prevent, you know, the well, assets from being seized. If five years go by, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. Anyway, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but what you the always fuck? have the guy whacked. What, what the fuck? <laughs> it's hard to collect a settlement on a dead guy. It's always yeah, it's, you know, a lot it's only money. You don't have you don't have these kind of problems, do you, Scott? <laughs> Scott doesn't have problems like this, you know. What? 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 Me, I, Daddy I heard my name. He just Daddy sits down Walbuck. there in Plano, Texas, and just enjoys the good life. I'm still in Iowa, man. Huh? I, I'm still up in Iowa. Oh, you're still up in Iowa. Second okay. Week. How hot yeah. is it in Iowa today? Uh, right now I'm sitting on uh, my. Sister's Porch, it's 72. Wow. Wow. 72. Is it 108 here in Mesa? Let me see here. What, what's the temperature here in New York City? Uh, they said Denver was hot. I haven't been outside. I'm look, trying to look here to see what the temperature is, but it won't come up. So. They say it might hit 100 Saturday. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Friday. Friday. Yeah. yeah. So you turned on your air conditioner the other day, and you blacked out. Uh, all the midtown. Yeah. Broadway we're talking. Yeah, I told him this place is very badly wired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what what is that? It's 108 in. Right, right now. It's 115 <laughs> four o'clock this afternoon. I don't know how you can live don't in Arizona. The house, Charlie. I, I just never don't. leave the house. I love it. It's a dry <laughs> heat. Yeah. Can fry yeah. an egg on the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't even know you're sweating. I wonder, can you fry an egg on the sidewalk? Has anybody I tried that? Couldn't be. I, I wanted to do that in Vegas. I wanted to crack an egg and see if it would go, Alex. Maybe on a car rest. hood. Uh, on a car <laughs> hood, it might because that's metal. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was gonna. I says they wouldn't let me do it, but I was like, I want to see if it works as a sign. I think it would have. I like when it rained there. The 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 people were actually like amazed it was raining there because I guess they don't get rain out in the desert. It's like it's very rare. Yeah, it's only 82 here in Denver. Really? Right now. Son of yeah. a bitch. Oh, well, it, yeah. was, it, tomorrow, was 90, it was 90 it was 91 92 here today. Yeah. I yeah. went down I, I went down to go work out and by the time I got to the gym I was sweatier than I was when I left the gym. It, it, was, it was the humidity. Yeah. But the yeah. humidity wasn't that bad That's today, it. but the heat I'm, was I'm glad I'm not in the warehouse. It was very 100 degrees. Also, I don't know, somebody somewhere on, in Harlem tore down the trees on 116th Street. Oh, no I mean, I, there were no really, there's not a lot of shade, you mm -hmm. know. And, and so when you walk down the street, it's even hotter because it's like you're walking on a fucking griddle, you know, <laughs> which is terrible. Like, so. You need a so I'm trying to figure out whether I want to do a show on Thursday 
because uh, my friend Walter Sabo has asked me, he's going to do the Jim Bohannon show, which is on, I guess, is Mutual still around? I don't know what, what, who Jim Bohannon is on now, but he's on 300 stations. He wants me to come on and talk to him about, about Woodstock. Oh, uh, and he cool. says, well, you know, he has 30, uh, 300 stations that he's on, and it would be a good way to plug GabNet. Yeah. And I went, eh, I don't know. You know, I don't really give a shit, <laughs> you know. So I'm, I, I'm trying, I'm thinking about whether I want to not do a show on Thursday and go do that. Hey, that's, that's the first bit of advertising that uh, you've done. You know, the show you did for Walter uh, I, you know, it was on a number of stations, but I don't know what his audience is. Uh, this guy, I think, I think I've heard of him, and I think he has a bigger audience. Oh, he has a big audience. But do I really care about plugging this anymore? I, I don't oh. know. I don't know that I, I really care. Be nice to get a thousand subscribers. Well, you know, eventually I will. I'll, I'll drop dead, and everybody will do it just to. To be in memorial. Uh, I mean, Cap that memorial uh, subscri subscription. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You know, I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> Just fuck it. I, uh, you know. I feel like that. So, uh, anyway. Um, uh, plus, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm getting very tired lately. I, I have a hard time getting through two hours of this every night. I, I don't know whether it's my age or whether it's a certain depression that I'm currently involved in, you know, because of things in my life. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm tired all the time. Well, why don't you do an hour and have Jack move up his show? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm going to do. That would be yeah. admitting defeat. Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily. That would be saying, hey, it's it's... Time to start enjoying life a little bit. Yeah. And do stuff that you like to do. And if, if something is a grind. I haven't got the strength to do that, you know. <laughs> no, but I, I, and Marjorie thinks it's depression, you know, so. Could be. Uh, well, because I've been, just been going through some stuff, and it's, uh, it's not, uh, not fun, you know. Yeah. Um, I, oh, Charlie Walsh hit 115 degrees in Mesa, Arizona today. Yeah. Wow. 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 Well, let me uh, let me change the subject since we have Charlie here. Uh, ah. What? Uh -oh. And I want his opinion. Uh, is our president a racist? Hell yes. <laughs> Listen to what he says. Yes. Why don't you read what he said? Yes, we did read what he said. He's a no, racist. No, you only read part of it. Oh, oh, I see. What did you read, Phil? I read the part that said, if you don't like it here, uh, go to another country. And and then when uh, you figure out how to fix their problems, you can come here and yeah, fix these. Yeah, yeah. What country and would that be exactly, Phil? You didn't quite read it right, though, Phil. Harlem. Yeah, well. He said, the, go back to where you came from and, th uh, and go to another country. Three of these women yeah. didn't, didn't come from anywhere outside the United yeah, States. Yeah, they were born, born here. in the U.S. You know, what he was talking about was not a race thing. He was saying, if you don't like it here, go somewhere Did else. you see the... the wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not, wait a minute. not only was it racist, Phil. It not only was it racist, Phil. It was sexist as well. They were three yep. ethnic women. women. So what? Everything is racist, <laughs> racist, racist. Yeah. You're racist. No. I'm a racist. Hey, Everybody's hey, it racist. wasn't, it wasn't hey, you know racist what? until he said. If you were working said, at any company today, you'd have been fired for that. Yes, oh, no. absolutely. people are too sensitive. Are too sensitive. It doesn't matter. Phil, you would have been Phil, fired did anybody ever say to you, you know what did anybody ever say to you when you were growing up, why didn't you go back where you came from? Yeah. Okay, how did you feel about that? I like Brooklyn. No, so, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. We're not joking now, Phil. We're being serious about this. How did you feel about that? Uh, I got called Dirty Jew. They never told me to go back. Okay. Well, I, you know, I was a kid. They didn't even know there was yeah, a back. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that whole trope of go back to where you came from is a racist trope. Uh, if I'll there's any, the if wall. there's any trope which is more racist than that, I don't know of one. Can, can I say that I think what's happening is this divisiveness 
is is exactly what the Russians want no, to happen. This divisiveness what, is exactly what, they, what is exactly what Trump yeah, has Trump's created. Doing what no, the Russians want. no, no, I I really think it's uh, the the whole country is being manipulated mm. by Facebook and by the Russian bots and, and all of this stuff. And you well, guys are falling the, for it. You're dreaming. Maybe the Russians are are happy with it, and 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 Trump is leading the way. I don't think he's leading yep. the way. I think you guys fell right into their trap. Oh, no, I... Trump Trump fell into it, and he's leading the way. And the Russians are sitting back and going, "Yeah, go for it, Trumpy." No, they're taking everything he says out of context. <laughs> It's not no. out of context, no. Phil. I read everything he said. He, 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 and exactly. Phil, Phil, now, Phil, hold on a second, Phil. Okay. If you say take him out of context, the context he's in is 250 words in a tweet. Okay? That's his context. That's where he says what he has to say. I have read those, those uh, 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 tweets, and I'm telling you, I've never seen anything more racist. And if he comes out and tries to defend it, maybe it's a little different, but he doesn't. He comes back out and backs it up. If when I was at Sirius, I had written a tweet like that, okay? Bye-bye. I would have gotten fired. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's because everybody is overreacting. No, it's not overreacting, oh, no, Phil. It's not an overreaction. It's not an overreaction. Every, uh, you know, everything that anybody does, racist this, racist that. Racist yeah, but how, this, uh, to begin with, to begin with, your, 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 your guy is so stupid that he didn't know that these three of these four women were from America. They don't yep. act like it. Oh, Phil. They, a, 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 they absolutely are. criticizing Obama, so he has no right to say anything about people criticizing him. Oh, and how can he turn around and say to this country? What are we going to say, how can Kevin? He turn around and put words in their mouth that they hate America when they've been he didn't elected. Put in their mouth. He did. I, no, he put uh, it in their mouth. I, I wish I did. I wish None I of those printer, women said they hate America. He and says could, they oh, hate America. Could they not be? Could they not be? And I think this is probably the best answer of all: not be a bunch of women who want to make America better, okay, and want to improve it. No, Phil. Come on. They These, hate America. Uh, they, they don't oh, hate America, such, Phil. Yes. They oh, hate the... Shit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think they hate the America that exists right now. And they, and hate, they hate the Jews. They hate the and America. They hate Israel. They hate... They, hate, oh, they don't hate Jews. They hate oh, Israel. You, yes, they Ilian, hate Omar, Omar said that Israel is evil and mm -hmm. that the... The Israeli the government, not the, the Israelis. The Israelis, the Israelis, Phil, not the Jews. The not the government. Jews. Not the people. Uh, I don't think they're evil. I do. Well, I do. I, I don't think Yahoo I, is a crook. Yeah. yeah I think, because I, he got some free cigars? I, th I think there is nothing worse than what Israel has become, and I resent them calling themselves the Jewish state because it reflects negatively upon me. Uh, we have a disagreement there. Oh, a big one. A yeah. big one. Yeah. Go to Israel, and you can make your own decision. Well, I. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. If you, hey, hey, if you, if you don't like, if you like Israel so much, why don't you move there? Why don't you go there? I. I well, you want, why don't you go back to? Israel? Why don't you go, go there? Israel. Have you ever been to Israel? No, I have. Then why? Then, then 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 why don't you go there and then come back and tell us all this? Because it's the Jewish homeland. No, it's, it's not. It is not. No, it's not. The Jewish homeland. I, Oddly enough, is a diaspora as spread it, out no, throughout it, the entire earth, which is a good place for us to be. Because the last time we put ourselves all in one place, look what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, this is a different story. These people are willing to fight. Uh, they're not going to lay down like uh, like many other past generations did, and say, "Take me." Where's the train? All right. Gee, you've got the balls of a man with a prostate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't affect the balls, only the, only the, you know, what squirts out. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, let's not talk about that subject. The balls are still hanging low. All right, let's not talk about that subject. <laughs> uh, not one I want to talk me. about right now. Uh, uh, I just feel that um, what this president did with these tweets was unconscionable. I mean, it was so unpresidential, and it was so un-American that I, that I just found it 
uh, stunning that he would that he uh, even he would say this stuff. You know. So I mean, I just uh, uh, I mean, uh, what did you feel, Charlie? I mean, you're black, okay? How'd you feel when you heard that? I felt disgusted. I mean, uh, have you ever had anybody tell you to go back where you came from? No, they told me to <laughs> do other things, but not... not they, you know why they didn't ask you that? Because they're not as stupid as Trump, and they knew that you were from here. Yeah. Okay? I mean, Trump should have, before he even made that tweet, should have done his own homework to find out which of these women were born here, because his first tweet assumed they were not born here. You assumed that he no, assumed No, he no, no. Here. Look, read the tweet, Phil. He, he said... If you don't like it here... No, no, that you're paraphrasing. Read the tweet. Yep. Uh, I'm looking for it. You know. It's hard. It's uh, Oh, it's on Twitter. Uh, I, I'll never find it. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I'll find it. Wait a minute. Let me, let me look up here. What, what is it? Uh, uh, Trump... It should be right at the top of your feed if you got it there, at Donald Trump. Racist tweet. I don't know. I push the button. I don't know how to use uh, Twitter that much. Okay, let's see here. Uh, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Pelosi? Now listen to me. Listen to me. Here we go. Yeah. Here you go. Mm -hmm. So interesting to see progressive Democratic Congresswoman who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt and inept anywhere in the world, if they even have a functioning government at all. Now, did well, you see what he said? Somalia. No, he no, he said. These congresswomen who came from countries whose governments, blah, 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 blah. He was referring to all four women coming from outside the United States. Yep. So, so what? What do you mean, so what? The <laughs> stupidity of it, the racism of it. You no, know, because the problem with that he He's is assuming because they're black that they came from another and country. And let's say for a moment. Well, he, originally. Wait a minute. Let's say he's not a racist. Let's just for All a right. moment. I mean, and that's that that is kind. Of, you kind of have to be stupid to not say he's a racist after what he wrote. But let's say he's not a racist. What he's doing is giving permission to other racists yeah. in his comments. You know, they, he's giving permission, can Phil. To do whatever they want to do. Just because he makes a statement doesn't make one person. Uh, uh, give them license to do what they want to do. What about Nancy Pelosi? He's today? giving him. He is the leader of this country. He is supposed to be the conscience of a nation. Okay. No. Wait a minute. Let me, Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I am bestowing it on him, Phil, because the people look <laughs> to their leaders for their morality and for their leadership. Okay. And he is giving permission to people who would like to go out and burn synagogues and burn black churches and so on, a sense of permission to do it. You're reading into... I'm not reading what? into anything. He I'm is not, not saying, giving anything. I am not saying I'm reading anything. into anything. He's giving permission. No, he, nobody filled out a permission slip and said you can go down the hall. Uh, you know, this... Phil, Phil, what, did, you're, what you're doing is you're asking him to be president and not be presidential. And not yep. do part of the job, which is being the moral compass of a country. Well, that's not his job. Yes, it is. You well, think that's it is. one of his jobs? No, it, 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 this is a different kind of president, and he doesn't. Oh, uh, of course, he he, he's the first. He doesn't govern it, that. Yes, way. you're right. He is a different president. He's the first one we've had who's a fucking racist. Second, I don't. Think oh, second, who was the first? <laughs> Scott. Number one. Well, I, Alex. I, I, I read this today. Yeah. They said that right now they think Donald Trump is tied for first place with Andrew Johnson. Oh, yeah. I thought Andrew Jackson was a racist, but not Andrew yeah. Johnson. So yeah. I learned something today that he's only he's only he's tied right now as the most racist president. With it was Andrew. when the heck break the tie? Andrew Johnson was the one that got impeached. Yeah. Yeah. Why did that they impeach him? say something right there? They impeached him for some kind of impropriety, financial impropriety. I can't remember. Now, Josh yeah, probably oh, knows. Josh probably knows. Josh, why was Andrew Johnson impeached? Uh, he, he tried to fire some cabinet members, and Congress got in an argument with him about whether or not he had the power to fire cabinet members. Yeah. 
And then they passed a law that said that he couldn't because he said he had the power. They said he didn't. So then they passed a law that said that he couldn't, and he fired him anyway. So they basically said he viol violated a federal law. And Does that know, law still exist? Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't think so, no. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. And then they would have been in the wrong well, most anyway. of his I mean, the president has the right to most, fire. Most of, Trump's, member. most of Trump's cabinet he, he can fire because they do not yeah. have the position of secretary of blah, blah, blah. They are certainly acting. acting. And he yeah. likes that because he can fire them at will. You know, I, I read an interesting uh, thing today. Uh, they had a list of all the people that were associated with uh, Hillary and uh, Bill Clinton who, who were killed or died under suspicious, suspicious oh, circumstances. Oh, yeah. Hillary yeah. did. Yeah. Hillary yeah. did. I know she did. I saw her do it. Well, anyway, I, I sent it to somebody and I, I had to put the caption on, at least Trump fires his people <laughs> <laughs> instead of kills them. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And how many of... Uh, Clinton's people went to jail. Oh, they they die. They don't get to go to jail. They don't uh, get to collect unemployment. They just get killed. <laughs> well, I just you know I just feel that it uh, you know that uh, you know we have a president here who is I think setting a bad example, and um, uh, I I I think that what he said was what I've always heard was considered racist when you tell somebody to go back to where they came from. Uh, um, I think yeah. you're being too sensitive. No, I'm not being too sensitive, Phil. I'm being compassionate towards my fellow man who shouldn't be treated Every, this way. It's compassion, yeah. The, you know, I mean, he should have a little more respect for these Congress people. You know. uh, and the Congress people should have a little more respect for him. Well, today they, uh, they basically said that... Uh, um, uh, he uh, they censured it. They did a censure on it. What what happened to Pelosi? I thought Pelosi was the one that was being censured. Well, that uh, today no 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 a, no a they, 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 because one of your Republican assholes said that she had violated the rules of the discussion by going out right. after somebody or whatever. So like they they held a vote, and of course she wasn't censured for it, and her oh. remarks were kept in the uh, in the uh, in the record in the record. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I, I sent you the list of dead, uh, uh, of dead, um, uh, I think I said it. Um, uh, geez. Now it's telling me I don't have internet. Uh, what is this? Oh, there. Uh, where's the list of dead people? Did you get it? Oh, God. Yeah. A list of. Uh, uh, I can't open it now. So if, if Americans are all about, you know, personal freedom and responsibility and their own decisions, ha I guess have the, in this case, if, you know, you're defending in his comments, have we decided now that he is the arbiter of the bar for, you know, if, if you don't love it, leave it? I mean, who decides, you know, whether or not you meet the criteria? It sounds like we've decided that it's Trump who writes the criteria, and if you don't meet his... You know, he, you're going to fall into the, you know, if you don't love but leave it criteria, which so I, mean, he, he, I mean, that's Josh. what I'm saying. I mean, why does that have to be the you, case? I mean, so, so there are three or four people in Congress who vehemently disagree with the president of the United States. Uh, that's not it's fucking new. That. That's existed since there were people that didn't agree with Washington. You know? yep. <laughs> I mean, so all of a sudden, because they don't agree with him, they're, you know, they're enemies of the state i mean that's where i start well, having i, I, th I think that i think that uh, many of you are giving trump uh, a, a power that he isn't using doesn't have doesn't want whether it's uh, how he acts wh uh, what he says Phil, uh, attri Phil, attributing Phil. attributing stuff to him that is not part of his he has no res look he has no respect for the office he holds you know uh, which I is know it, it, which we're expected to to respect and how could you respect a man who, and, and an office that's being handled this way? Yeah, but, I, but I'm not giving him that power, is what I'm saying, Phil. You're giving him that power. No, I, I, I'm I not don't. giving it to him. I'm saying there is no standard for if you don't love it, leave it. Everyone can love or not love America as much as they want. That's the nice thing about living here. This is, I don't know, I mean, this is one of the few places in the world where you can openly go out in the street, burn the flag, and say... 
you know, my government can kiss my ass and they can't haul you away somewhere, put a bullet in the back of your head and kick you in a ditch. And, I mean, if you can, and, you, and, and he can say, if you don't like it here, go somewhere else. He certainly can, but that's what I'm saying. You're supporting what he said, so you're, you're basically, you know, allowing him to have that kind of power. As to where he I think much people right in your speak. position who are supporters of his should be saying, listen, Mr. Trump, you know, I'm a supporter of you. Why do you have to treat people who don't agree with you this way? We're winning. Why don't you focus on, you know, our mission? Well, you got to get off on this. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just ridiculous. I mean, that, that's what I don't understand about, the, you know, this whole thing. I mean, if President Obama, for example, or really anyone else, but if President Obama were to have said some of these things about, you know, uh, a couple high-profile Republican members of Congress you know, who happened to be white or whatever, you know, he would have got the angry black Negro thing put on him. You know, <laughs> it's just like... He did anyway. That would be wrong. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, uh, I, I finally got that list to open, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm beginning to think if you want to talk about something uh, the Russians have planted, yeah, that may be a good example of it. Probably. I, I think the whole thing, everybody's calling everybody else a racist. I think that, you know, people ought to just pull back a little bit and really look at it and have a discussion. And instead of going personally after people, racist, you're a racist, he's a racist. You know, it sounds like you get a Buick, you get a Buick. Phil, everybody's Phil, a racist. Phil, Phil, but, you know, what the, pre the president's tweet was so out there, was so beyond the pale, Phil, uh, uh, Phil. That, that we can't do anything else but react to it. I mean, when I saw it, I went, I can't believe that he's gone this far, that he's tried to play to his base so much that he's willing to be racist about it. You no, know? I, I think that uh, <laughs> you're Phil, you're, you, uh, any an sensible human being, look, I would have never said anything like that on the radio. Cause I, I wouldn't have said it either. Because I know I'd get fired for it. Okay. I wouldn't say it on and, your show. And, and the President of the United States, if he says this, should be fired for it. Uh, I, because I don't think it, his statement was racist. I think it's being taken Well, then you don't us. know what a racist is, Phil, and that's probably because you're too fucking white. Uh, I mean, but I often look at these things, and what disturbs me is the fact about whether or not you even agree that it's racist or not is in some ways to me is irrelevant. Where it disturbs me, and I said in some ways, don't get me wrong, okay, where it disturbs me sometimes is I sit around and think, you know, it's just amazing to me that a that a president who has been widely reported refuses to read, you know, a daily highly classified national security briefing that's five pages long. He doesn't have time to read that, but he, this is the shit that he has time for. I mean, yeah, I I I don't understand that. I mean, I think I think you know, the, be the above that. In the beginning, when he was being given those briefs, he felt that he was being manipulated by the oh, people that were giving God. him those briefs. And he has and the right to put people gone. in place that he doesn't believe are doing. I mean, it, it's just... Well, he has that, a right, that, but That's a horseshit trust... cop-out excuse here. We're no, not... that's what he said. I mean, but there are a hundred examples of things like that. It, that, that. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's clear that this is the kind of petty stuff, you know, that he, he spends his time on. I mean, that that's one little tiny detail that we've gotten in the last few years out of a hundred others that prove that he is so vain and so superficial that these are the types of things that occupy his day rather than things that the president of the united states is meant to be taking care of i mean uh, well i don't know today he, yesterday he was in, in uh doing a speech for made in america day and he, uh, he signed a proclamation about it. You know, th th he's going around and he's, you know, granted, when he did this Made in America Day, it did sound like he was campaigning. But uh, he, he is. He's always he is, campaigning, Phil. He's been campaigning since the day he got elected. Yeah. Well, if you would have watched uh, the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross, oh, you would have seen <laughs> Always Be Closing. Hey, 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 this, is, the this isn't a fucking you know, movie. This, <laughs> this is America in a life and death throes, okay, but, with a guy leading us, leading us, who is leading us into a moral abyss. Uh, well, uh, 
Well, but but my problem here, if I were a Republican, my problem here, if I were a Republican, would be kind of from this angle, okay? Because I always try to compare everything sometimes to sports because I'm such a huge sports fan. And in sports, you look at it and, and you look at players on the field or whatever and you say, what is this guy doing to help me, okay? You try to build a winning organization where you say everybody in the building is going to help push our agenda of winning forward or they're holding us back. You know, it's a racing, you know, thing. If you're not going faster, you're going slower. So I guess what I'm saying is how does this kind of thing push your agenda as a Republican or as a conservative or whatever? What does this do to help achieve the goals that you it, want. What, what, the, are you what saying the tweets do? or what, what, what uh, Trump is doing? Uh, well, you can doing. just go with the tweets. That's fine. I'm talking about that. I don't think the tweets help. In general, but we're talking specifically right now about the tweets, I, so that's fine. Because, okay. because I, I don't think the tweets help. And then, and then by Josh, the way, by he's the, a one-man mm -hmm. team. He's not a, he's not a team player. He's a one-man well, team. Right. I, right. I, I understand that's the answer. And I suppose my answer is, I guess those people, the overwhelming 99 percent majority or not that's more than majority i mean are all going to vote for him anyway so that's what i'm saying if you want to rule the country in the way that you see fit i mean if you want to put every single idea that you got into action and make it all happen and die thinking you fixed the entire world you have got to get more than just the 40 percent of people that consider themselves flat out hardcore republicans because the other half of the country is democratic, so they're already against. So that's what I'm saying. How does this kind of stuff help you do that? I mean, it's a waste of his fucking time. Again, even if you agree with it, it's a fucking waste of time. Like getting high. Yeah, you had your hand up, uh, uh, Tony. Yeah, I'm laughing at my mother. She's yelling at the TV watching the Met game. She just called him a fuck. <laughs> I can pitch it. That is racist, Tony. That's racist. Phil, you know something? You know what I'm upset with with you here? Is yeah. you making light of this racist... Wait, let me light. finish, Phil. Well, Please, without interrupting me. All right. That you make light and think it's funny and that you take this lightly and we just don't understand because we're just being oversensitive about it being racist. Look, if there's a guy I don't think is overly sensitive, it's Charlie. And Charlie, I'm sure you feel it's racist, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Charlie also feels it's Trump. No. Well, but you can't just say that, Phil, because that's like saying, uh, you know, I mean, that's racist against Trump. You know, you would have gotten down Obama's throat faster for something else that wasn't even in the ballpark with this thing. Stuff like that doesn't bother me. Well, I know, then yeah. it, but it should, Phil, if you had a conscience. The fact is, yeah. your problem is you're too fucking white. And you don't understand. <laughs> like and, and, and by the way, by the way, your Jewishness, for some reason, has not made you a more empathetic person. No, because I'm not willing to lay down. Because and, no, because and you're, because you're a Shonda for the, because you're a Shonda for the goyim. No, you know we've been given away this country long enough. Trump has said America first. He's going to bring back jobs. He's going to he's going to make the economy better, and he's going to cut deals that are better for this country, not other countries. Yeah, because he, was, because, you know, he because he okay. because because he was such a great businessman. Well, it, it doesn't matter. He is now. No, he's you know, not. No, he's not. No, he's not. What deal has he made with China? He has completely caved in on they're, China. They're still negotiating. He, he completely caved in they're, on China. They, they, he completely they have, caved they in dropped. on China, Phil. They, their economy is dropping. He right caved. Now. It went uh, from six point eight to six. That doesn't matter. That doesn't GDP. matter, Phil. Every uh, this is happen. This may be something just happening around the world. The point but, is that he caved <laughs> on China. No. But I'm, he didn't. Care. But I'm just saying. Yes, he did. Uh, but I'm back to asking you though. If if all that if that's what you're saying and you believe that, I'm just back to asking you. What does having this kind of stuff dominate the news cycle for 72 hours? How does that further that agenda? I've it, never challenged you that you believe in his agenda. I don't argue those kinds of things with people. You're allowed. What does this do to further that agenda? 
Well, it's uh, the the news cycle is decided by those media outlets, oh, and they're the there ones. There we that go. And, and he hasn't learned that by now. He well, hasn't he said, "Well, wow, if I say this dumb shit." They talk about nothing but that for three fucking days, and that takes away from okay. what I want let to me, talk about. Let me, let so me. I should stop I saying know. dumb shit. Let me, <laughs> let, let me, wait a minute. Hold on a second, yeah. Phil. Let me proffer this opinion, that he does something like this to turn your attention away from something else. That's what I was going to yes. say. Okay, yeah. and that he uses it as a diversion. It's like a magician uses diversion so he can pull the trick and not have you yeah. see how it's done. Like Epstein. Huh? Like Epstein. I think the Democrats are going to go down with Epstein. No, no. And, and, and if you think that he does that for that reason, that means to me that you are approving legislation or furthering your agenda by... You know, trickery and underhanded moves by distraction, so I can and sneak these things in. And if that isn't the most un-American and non-democratic thing that a person could support in, in, in this country, then I, I don't know what is. That's why I don't understand how people within your own party can support these types of tactics and these type of statements and this type of nonsense. While you guys can't just say because. You know what? We want our cake and we want to eat it too. We want to be Republicans, we want to be conservatives, and we want to get someone in there who can do it with integrity. For years, the Democrats have been attacking Republicans, and the Republicans did nothing about it. They didn't say a word. Trump is the first one that if you hit him, he hits back. And if you don't like it, that's just tough. That's the way he is. Can you don't give hit us him, an example of the attack? Back. Okay, let, let Scott say, let's say, what's yeah. Scott? Can you give us an example of when we attacked the Republicans? I'm, I'm not aware of these. Trump, well, when I mean, you attacked Trump. No, you said when the oh, Democrats well, yes. attacked uh, Romney, Romney, for instance. Joe Biden said that uh, Romney was going to have the noose around black people's uh, neck. You, uh, do you remember that? Uh, what, he was campaigning, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and Biden, uh, it was Biden versus uh, Romney at that point. And uh, in the, in a thing, and and Biden said that he uh, that if you voted for Romney, black people, and I think it was an NAACP thing uh, that uh, Romney would have a noose around their neck. You know, and, and you know what Romney did? He did nothing. He just wow. took it. And Ro Romney's not a racist, but he, they pulled the race card in that situation. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just one example okay. of the uh, many Phil, times Phil, they've attacked. Phil, Phil, and the, uh, Phil, and Phil, uh, Phil. Biden never doing that. I don't have his name here right now because I had it on my iPhone, but unfortunately I left my iPhone in the other room. Uh, so I'll get my homework. But, you know, if you want to say, let's, let's ask the man who owns one what his opinion <laughs> is. Uh, there's a guy who was uh, the head of the Nazi party and the Nazi contingent in uh, what was the town down south? Charlottesville. Charlottesville, Okay, yeah. He came out today and said, uh, uh, unfortunately, the president's tweets were right. racist. That's his opinion. <laughs> but he's, he he's should a know Nazi. He's, he's a fucking he's a Nazi, Nazi, and he thought it was racist. <laughs> Well, maybe he's dating a Democratic gal. Yeah, see, now you make a joke out of everything. <laughs> well, so. what else can you do? No, he was. Well, what you can do is liked. start taking this seriously because your nation is at stake, Phil. The life Scarbo of, of your the nation and the and and the and yeah. the, the my nation's been at stake for the last two or three presidents mm -hmm. that have been giving it away. And now we have one that has countries. turned it into a almost into a uh, a, a pre-Nazi Germany. Nah, yeah. you're, you're, yes. you're making you're, you're Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Scott wall. agreed with me. What Scott say? What you were going to say? And then well, Jeff. Well, I, I was going to say that Scaramucci, the mooch, came out and oh, said yes. it was it was it was, uh, it was racist also. Yeah, I'm sure there was, a, there was a lot of people that did. I think uh, wait a minute, look, fell, fell, let other people let uh, let other people talk here. Right. Yes, Jeff has his hand up. Yes, I think I think there are four Republican uh, congressmen who today said that they thought that Trump is acting like uh, a racist. Yes. Yes. And one of them was Mitt Romney, by the way. Oh, he, Mitt Romney doesn't like Trump. And uh, number one, and number you two, the fish uh, you know, the, uh, the four Congress people 
uh, were ones that their districts uh, uh, were in jeopardy. And, and if they wanted to get reelected, you're looking for excuses, actually, Phil. I, we're telling you people that have come out against him that aren't in the mainstream of people who would normally come out against him. There was even one guy, some guy from California, I can't remember his name, uh, who was uh, getting up to defend Trump today, and he said, uh, "You know, we're uh, we're fighting uh, 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 socialism to save democracy," as though. You equate socialism with democracy when the two have nothing to do with each other. Mm. Yes, Phil, what are you looking up? Uh, uh, oh, the, the hanging statement. Uh, I couldn't find it. Uh, I'm looking. What hanging statement? What? Uh, Biden's. Biden, Biden, says, Biden said that about Romney. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking. But Romney today came out unequivocally. Oh, and chains. Biden tells African American. It's CBS. Biden tells African American audience GOP ticket would put them back in chains. And uh, uh, in 2012, uh, Romney campaign says Biden changed comments. Uh, let me get past this thing. Uh, fucking iPhone. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, Biden told uh, a diverse crowd here, including many African Americans, that presumptive Republican nominee Mitt Romney would put you all back in chains by unshackling Wall Street. Biden told more than 800 ticketed supporters. Wait a minute, 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 Phil, Phil, Phil. Those CBS. are two, those are two different statements. One is referring right. to the economics. And to the and to big business, and the other is referring to actually putting and, and black people racist? back in chains. No, yeah, I, no. it's going to put blacks in chains. No. That's racist. No, oh, that well, that term, that so, statement. No, that's not racist. Uh, I, I, you know, I think I'm surprised. That, that that's no, that's not racist, Phil. It's not, uh, then them. Okay, if I admit that's racist, will you admit that what Trump said was racist? No. Okay, then fuck you. But even if you think it is, and, and, and even if you think it is and you're a supporter of Joe Biden like I am, then just say what he said is wrong. I don't agree with that. He shouldn't do that. And my second point to that would be, if Joe Biden said it and it, it said something that you think is racist, so what? Now that's permission for Donald Trump to say things that are so, racist? It's okay? So it's, wait, wait. If you're the freeway patrol man and you pull over a guy for speeding and you say, sir, I pulled you over for doing 70 and a 55, and he says, well, yeah, but that other guy was going 72 and he passed right by me. And you were a police officer. Did you ever, oh, well, then you can yes. go now. It's okay. No. I mean, give me a no, fucking what break. what happens is I caught you. The other guy got away. That's the deal. Well, but, exactly. they, but they were both still wrong. And what you're Doesn't saying is, well, Joe so Biden said it, so it's, it's fine. I Just can answer your question. One at a time. Hmm. I did. Yeah, I, I wouldn't let the guy go unless uh, I knew him. But, um, uh, <laughs> or is yeah, it the, it, it, this is in quotes. Put you all back in chains. Put you all back in chains. That's but how are you That's equating that same, with Romney same, saying Romney saying that, that about Wall Street? That is a racist Street. statement. No, but no. How you? Because how, uh, and yeah, you think Romney is a racist? That well, he and wasn't he, making he, a he racist statement. statement. He was talking about Wall Street and about big business. No, oh, he, he was. He yeah. was. What using, did he say? What he did he say? The race car. What did he to, say? To what did he say? What did Romney say? Uh, Romney didn't say anything. That's the problem. Yeah, that's, no, that's no, 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 no. You said that Romney about. said something when he's running for, for president. No, Biden said it. Biden said it. Said, but you said that Romney said something. No, no. He said it about Romney. I'll send it to you. He said uh, what about Romney? That he would put blacks in chains oh. uh, if you voted Wait for Wait a minute. Him. Now, when when did Romney president? say who would put... 2012. Okay, but uh, did he say that... Biden. Wait a minute. Did he say that today about uh, Trump? Who? Romney? Romney. Uh, no. Biden. Biden? Yeah. I don't know what he said about Trump. Biden's got his own problems. Well, wait a minute. You know? why, why are you going back to something that went on he's, with he's Romney? Back in I, I, 2012, this, this he's digging. Char, Char, Charlie challenged me and said, I have never seen Democrats attack uh, Republicans no, and them not I answer said that. with another attack. No, that isn't, wait a minute. That isn't what Charlie said at all. Tell him what you said, yes. Charlie. 
What'd you no, say? I said it. Oh. Yeah, I didn't say anything about not oh, believing oh, Republicans Scott? got attacked. Oh, Scott said it. So I found... Gee, you can't even get your quotes right. It don't matter. I found an instance where uh, that supported what I said. Mm-hmm. You know, and there are many others. The Republicans never fought back. They would say, oh, well, we don't want to go there. You know, we don't want to lower ourselves to, 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 to those kinds of accusations. And so they didn't do anything. Trump is a street fighter. You punch Trump, he's going to punch back. And for the first time, the Democrats are getting punched back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. It. Hold so on a second. Hold on a second, Phil. Phil, 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 shut up now. Okay? okay, for a little bit, let other people talk. All right. No problem. Okay. I sent you the article. Yeah, fine. I'll read it when I have a chance. I'll do exactly what Trump does. It'll be on my desk for a week. <laughs> His desk is clean. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the whole the whole thing is, uh, I think, uh, disgusting and objectionable to me, and I think it's going to be objectionable to a lot of voters too. I think. We'll that, see. Hmm. We'll see. No, I think that. Oh, he will appeal to the white racist in this yeah. country. He will. They'll vote for him. They'll get out for him. All the guys wearing the fucking hat, you know? I don't think there's enough of them to... I think you're going to get more black votes. You're going to get more Oh, Hispanic he's going to... After this, he's going to get black votes? Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, because they're, they're tired of being lied to. Mm-hmm. You at, Listen to Candace Owens. <laughs> oh, God. Candace Owens. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're tired of being lied to. You guys always bring up the black people. You know, there's always like the one black person. (laughs) You know, sure. uh, Are you sure you didn't hit the dispensary out there? Yeah. Well, you know that Hispanic (laughs) home ownership is at the highest it's ever been. He's Uh, high. Yeah. Has to be. Uh, Woo. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You know, I mean, the economy is good, and and it's really tough to defeat a guy when the economy is good. Economy's not good for the average person. Uh, I don't know about that. You know, I'm sure, you know, because we're sitting around on GabNet, we're, you know, except for uh, Scott and Jeff, <laughs> we're, uh, you know, mm-hmm. we're more the average person. Hmm. What? Oh, boy. Uh, income-wise. Not average? Yeah. No, you're not average. Why not? Well, because Why? everybody else is unemployed. Well, I don't work it. I know, but uh, you don't have to. You were smart. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, where are we? Okay, I'm trying to trying to figure out why I'm having a problem here doing switching. Ah. No, well, that's it. Uh, 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 there was one other thing. Um, oh yeah, so t- today this this guy from California in defending Trump. Equated- so his last name started with an M. I uh, think so. McCarthy? Yeah, that's the asshole. He's a fucking he's piece the, of shit. Uh, he's the House. Uh, uh, he's the equivalent of Pelosi for the for the Republicans. Oh, Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's minority he's leader. Minority leader. Minority leader. That's it. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, uh, he, uh, you know, I mean, he he was uh, he's amazing. He's just amazing. Uh, idiot. Yeah, he's an idiot. Well, he's a minority. You're going after him because that's racist. No, we're not being racist, Phil. <laughs> yeah, he's a minority. Minority uh, speaker. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I mean, he he equated socialism as being the uh, the enemy of democracy, and I went. So so did Trump. Well, that's it's an idiotic statement. I'll tell you, when I was a kid. And I, this was years ago when I was in college, City College of San Francisco. It wasn't really college. It was a pretend college. It was a um, socialist haven. Yeah. Uh, we had a teacher who said, okay, I want you to read uh, Chapter 8, and then tomorrow we'll discuss it. And so I read Chapter 8, and Chapter 8 was called Communism Versus Democracy. Mm-hmm. And the next day I went in, and she said, any comments? I raised my hand, and she said, yes, uh, Bennett, what is what's your comment? He said it's stupid. It was a stupid, um, it's stupid to be in a textbook that we're trying to learn from. I said because it's a fallacious statement. You can't compare communism to democracy. And she said, well, why? I said because communism is an economic form, 
And democracy is the relationship of the government to the people. I said, the two, you could have a communist democracy. And she said, you're wrong, next. Okay. And, and it, since then, I've become very sensitive to people who, who do that sort of thing and say that, oh, socialism is the en uh, enemy of democracy. But it's not. It has nothing to do with fighting democracy. You can, have a socialist, you can have a socialistic democracy. You know? I thought it was capitalism versus socialism and versus communism. Well, yeah. if communism versus socialism would be a good argument. Okay. Uh, a, a democracy versus totalitarianism would be a good argument, but not socialism versus democracy. I'm sorry. It's just they're not, they're not the enemies of each other. There are a lot of uh, socialistic democracies in this world. Except socialism is evil. No, no, it's not evil, Phil. Uh, yeah, it, t it takes away uh, your... Bullshit, uh, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. What, is, right. what it does is it allows people to have the, some of the basics of life available to them, yeah. such as doctors and things like that, that they wouldn't normally be able to have uh, here in America. Here in America, if you don't have enough money, uh, I'm sorry, you die. You just yeah. die. You know... You went and got your prostate taken care of. There's some people who can't afford to have their prostate taken care of, Phil. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, I mean, but so, if, if that was the case, they'd be on uh, Medi Cal or Medicaid. Uh, and by the Medi way, by the Medicaid. way, you, you know, I've been uh, against Biden during this whole thing until just last week when Biden came up with his medical plan. In which oh, you can keep your doctor? Well, what it is is that he says it's Obamacare, but it's um, Obamacare on steroids in which you get uh, free medical and so on and so forth, but you get to keep your doctor. It's all within the doctoring system. Uh, mm -hmm. He said he didn't want to radically alter it by doing Medicare for all because that's not something people could wrap the concept around. And he came out with a fairly decent plan. I mean, it, wasn't, it was something I could live with. Did you hear it, Charlie, at all? No. Anybody here hear it? I did. I did. It was the same lie that. Obama no, no. I don't want to hear what you think of it. Yeah, Jeff, did you well, hear? I heard it. Did you hear? No. Did you hear it, no. Scott? No, I did not. Uh, who who said they heard it? I did. I don't want to hear if you heard it, <laughs> Phil, because you're interpreting. Well, you ask who? You're interpret. I already asked you, and you said you, and I said we don't want your opinion on this one. All right. <clears throat> Uh, uh, people should check it out. It's kind of an interesting take on the whole thing mm -hmm. and, and not necessarily throwing in with... Uh, uh, Does it cover everybody? Yes. Yeah. Um, with health insurance mm -hmm. companies? Well, you know what we got to do? It, it, here's where we got to <laughs> bite the bullet on, on this whole uh, uh, situation with... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, with Medicare. Uh, with uh, with a one a single payer health system, is we at some point have to say we're going to have to say fuck you to the insurance companies. Yeah. Now you know, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that because up until I think maybe the 70s, insurance companies were not for profit. Uh, they weren't allowed to be for profit, and so therefore the insurance costs were very cheap. Yep. Uh, and uh, there's nothing wrong with putting these guys out of business. They've had a run. You know, they got it handed to them on a silver platter by the Republicans back in the 70s. And um, it's time for them to go back into the corner and lick their balls. Do you think the labor unions that invest uh, their funds mm -hmm. for retirement in these kinds of companies are going to uh, go along with uh, uh, I don't. Uh, do you, do you know that? The, do you that know revenue? that? The, do you know that the unions invest in uh, in insurance companies? Of course they do. No, no. You They're say of profitable. course. You say of course, but do they? Yeah. Okay, uh, tell me a com Tell me a, Tell me a labor union that does. Uh, the, uh, the the cop one. Uh, uh, you know what do they call it? Uh, uh, PERS. P E R S. Uh, it's a, a police. Police retirement funds, mm -hmm. uh, and and most unions. Wait a minute. Uh, okay, so who do they invest in in particular? 
Well, they, you they invest you in, uh, I would think, State Farm. No, I don't, I'm not asking you to say I think. Well, you, I, I don't know. Because, well, then you uh, don't, don't know that they do invest. You don't know that they do invest. Uh, in you're, 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 you're splitting hairs again. No, I'm not splitting hairs. You, you said you, something. I'm asking you to prove it. Uh, you, you know, if you look, uh, you know, where do you think? Do you think maybe, do you think they, do you think they invest in Apple? Sure. Okay. Do you think they invest in uh, in uh, Google? I think they invest in all of it. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is it's not like they are they're going to be mad if the insurance companies go away because they can take their money and put it somewhere else, well, right? Not if they else. not if they go out of business and they lose that investment. Well, you Don't get you, out of it. You, know, you get out of it before that happens. Well, that, that's easy for you to say, but they can't. You know, sometimes you're. No, you're, their you're, their their job is to administer a a a uh, 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 investment portfolio that will be lucrative to them. And if they see that the uh, that the insurance companies are going to be in trouble, they get out of that. I don't think it's that easy. You know what? Uh, you I think sell, people, Phil. You sell. <clears throat> when you sell, somebody has to buy it. And when you and, and when it's a fire sale, the price goes down. Phil, and you lose Phil, money. The, insu- the the believe it or not, the unions are not going to fight the killing of the insurance companies. We'll see. They fight everything else. Well, because they're paying a fortune, and it's costing them a lot of money to insure their members. Yeah, yeah. and it's and it's gone up because of Obamacare. No, it hasn't. Oh boy, the it's cost crippled. of insurance has gone down under it's the Affordable crippled. Care Act. It's tripled. It's and gone down. It was going up exponentially before the ACA. Yeah, because they knew the ACA was coming, and they were raising oh. the prices to anticipate it. And uh, and and also, if you try to use Obamacare, there, there, have, there was only it, one thing wrong with Obamacare. Deductibles. There was only one thing wrong with Obamacare, Phil, and that was the fact that it was created so Republicans would be happy. Yeah, and if they were going to be happy with a medical plan, it wasn't going to be as effective as it should be. Well, I don't think they were happy with it either because uh, what Pelosi said is just vote for it. You don't have to read what's in there; just vote for it. That's what she said. She said, you know, uh, because nobody read it. They just they just slammed. Nobody read the Trump's tax plan, and and Trump's tax plan is actually working. And and costing oh, yeah, people right. less in taxes. It's costing people less in taxes, but we had the biggest deficit, one month deficit in the history of the United States. Well, you know, uh, we're gonna. They just raise the uh, the spending limits. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's what they're voting on now in, in the Congress. Something they typically damn near refuse to do under President Obama, time after time after time. Yeah. By the way. And Didn't they pretty much any problems this time. <laughs> well, that's because uh, they won't be able to pay the bills, and they don't want another government shutdown. Well, that wasn't the argument when they didn't want to raise it under President Obama. <laughs> well, they <laughs> that, did. Not well, because of anything. It's because of their hypocritical fucking people. <laughs> it went from fifteen to <laughs> playing a game trillion. for power and money. <laughs> the deficit went from fifteen to nineteen trillion under uh, Obama. Yeah, and it's so up to tw- it's up to twenty two yeah, trillion it's under twenty one trillion now under. <laughs> I think it's twenty two years under Trump. Tw- I think twenty two. I, mean, I I would have some. There would be some credence in that statement if you were upset to the fact that it was still going up. <laughs> well, as long as you wanted faster, to make it go down, but you don't. So. Well, I guess, you know, uh, you know I got to trust that they're spending to... Uh, no, to what's, happening is, what's happening is Trump is spending like a drunken sailor. Okay? What's, what's I mean, he doing? He doesn't, he look at what he's doing on the border. How much is that costing us? Well, those people that are there anyway. And $4.6 billion just went to buy diapers and formula and toilets that are connected oh, gee. to sinks. God forbid we should buy toilets and buy diapers. Yeah. yeah. You know, if they fix the loopholes that allow people to not seek uh, asylum oh, in the fuck, country that fuck they it, fuck first it. I can't into. stand this anymore. I really right. can't stand this anymore. <laughs> You're, 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 you're uh, actually, if the government weren't holding those people, and, they would enter the country and buy one, their own toilets. As, 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 right. I'm going to say something you will understand, Phil. As one Jew to another, I cannot stand your insensitivity towards the human race. Okay? 
Well, I don't think I'm insensitive. You are not a good Jew. In fact, you're a terrible Jew. Well, thank you. I, I, but I'm an American first. Uh, yeah? You know what I am? A, a socialist. No. And, and anti-Trump. Huh? <laughs> anti-Trump. If, if Trump... if Trump Well, you're saying all the obvious things I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay, a, circumcised. I don't know. What else are you? I'm a citizen of this planet. And I live well, on it with a bunch of other people. And especially in the next four days, we should remember about our first jump out of the crib into yeah. space and the fact that we are so fucking insignificant in this universe that we shouldn't be taking ourselves this seriously. In a lot of ways. What do you mean in a lot of ways, in any well, you way? You take Trump too seriously. You know, you know, no, no. You know what the problem is? Trump takes himself too seriously. Way uh, too serious. Way well, too then, serious. Then you're, you're allowing that to affect you. No, it's not that I'm allowing it to affect me. All I know is that we are just a mere speck in this universe. And who knows? You know, we may be maybe the seed planet. We don't know that. But if we are, we owe it to the rest of the universe to be better than we are right now. And if well, we are the way we are right now, we don't deserve to leave this planet. You know, sometimes you got to worry about uh, the people no, that... I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear your bogus philosophy, Phil. All right. You know, I mean, it's just, it just it makes me feel so terrible that, that, that uh, you call yourself a Jew, but you don't act like one. Well, what, what does a Jew act like? Compassionate, Jews. compassionate, Phil. Well, I think I am compassionate. Well, I'll, you, no, you aren't. I, I, I want to worry when you about, when you make uh, some kind of when you we make some kind of statement about uh, well, you know, uh, when I said you know you could afford a prostate operation, but other people can't. You went, you just kind of sloughed it off like there it was nothing, like you couldn't I have agreed. compassion for another human being. Hey, you know, I, I agreed, uh, but I also said that, that you don't want somebody, you don't want any form of socialism, even though it might benefit people who have nothing. No, there are, but there are forms of socialism that we have that are already in place. And I said, Medicaid is, uh, is one way. If a guy has cancer and, uh, ha doesn't yes, have but, the money, but, but your you people, the people with your, the people with your philosophy would like to fit, kill Medicaid. They would like to kill Medicare. Yeah. Whether you'd like to or not, it doesn't matter. You know, that supposition, it's there. It's there, and people use it. And you're not going to be able to kill any of those programs. You're not even going to be able to kill oh. Obamacare. Oh, listen, I think that, uh, that our president is capable of killing just about anything. You know. No, because the only way he can kill it is maybe for another six years. He thinks he, he can write everything away with a with a with a, uh, right. with a presidential but, but, uh, whatever. Well, that, in six years. When the next guy comes in, let's say it's Romney uh, in six years, all right, that uh, Trump gets reelected and Trump can continue to write all of these uh, things. And then Romney comes in and says, I'm going to undo everything Trump did because I don't like Trump. You know, uh, it doesn't even have to be a Democrat that goes in there. There'll be somebody that uh, will walk in there. And the will biggest undo. danger, the biggest danger to America, the biggest danger to our freedom. The biggest danger to our future is Donald Trump. This man has to be stopped. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't agree with you. Well, I know you don't agree with me, Phil. Why did you even have to say that? Because it's par for the course. You know, get your two cents in. Anybody else want to put their two cents worth in here? <laughs> I agree even three. with you. What? Of course. Trump is the greatest danger to the United States as we know it. He is the as biggest enemy it. of democracy that I know of. Uh, you know, I don't think we've had a greater threat since, dare I say, Hitler. Then go back to where you came from. <gasps> San Francisco? <laughs> yeah, Marin. It's, 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 too, to it's, too, it's, it's too expensive there. I'm sorry. Marin, you fit right in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everybody in Marin's like-minded like you. Really? Are they all? 
Yeah. Every last one of them. I can't believe Every last I one. can't believe there aren't a lot of Republicans in Marin. They don't admit it. Well, no, but I can't believe there aren't a lot of Republicans in Marin. It's a very affluent. Uh, there prob- there probably are, but most most of them uh, are afraid to uh, to to wear the hat or walk in the street. Well, they don't want to wear the hat because it looks ugly. It is a cheap hat. It, yeah, it is a cheap fucking well, hat. Well, Tony knows about hats. Yeah. Made in Thailand, you anyway. were. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. Hey, I, uh, I got some training in Area 51 back in the early 90s. And uh, it, it's, just a, it's just a base. Uh, I went there. We, we did uh, a pistol, and, a pistol and SWAT training. And uh, we had to wear, uh, we couldn't wear our police uniforms. We had to wear all black with no, uh, uh, no patches uh, because uh, we were also allowed to eat in the cafeteria. And uh, there was no Martians. There were, there were, there were no UFOs. It's just, it's just a base. And they got secret stuff there. Planes no, yeah, I know. stuff like that. I never thought that there was. Uh, yeah. There were Martians there. I think that our whole uh, obsession with uh, being visited by people from outer space is you know, a, you know, it, is very egotistical, you know. You know what you need to mention tonight? What? Tonight's the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. I just mentioned it. Oh, you did? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. My mother drove me crazy. I didn't well, hear was the, no, I mentioned it, it while it, you were sitting there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the 19th oh, was when we landed. Well, the, no, the 20th. No, that's what, that was when he got out of the ship and walked on. Oh, the okay. So, in what time zone? Greenwich Mean. Oh, we should go back. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the, we, well, the rocket point, took Bill. the rocket took I'm, off. I'm talking about Chicago's time zone. The rocket <laughs> took off today, and uh, it uh, wound up on the moon on the 20th, and that's when he walked on the moon. Um, it, I, I was watching a documentary, the great doc, you got to watch this thing, Chasing the Moon on PBS. Did you see it, Charlie? It's um, like, no, I, I, I uh, haven't seen it yet, but I've heard about it. Yeah, it is terrific. I mean, there's stories that, you know, do you ever wonder how they pooped in space? <laughs> well, it, they tell you the story here. I think it's Borman who says that they gave, they had this, this uh, looked like a, a, a top hat, and, and it had a lining in it, and then you would, like, put your ass there and take a shit, okay? And then you would quickly close the, the oh, thing and, float. I don't know, stow it somewhere, I, you know. You uh, diapers? Yeah. You think they and, use diapers? And, and Borman said that he not. hated the idea and would not allow himself to take a shit for the entire trip. And when he got back to Earth, he said he asked people, can you get me to a bathroom fast? Because I haven't taken a crap <laughs> since the beginning Whoa. of the thing. In the fact, wait thing. a minute, let me finish the story, Phil. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Go ahead. What were you going to say that was so important? I did the same thing on the plane today. I wouldn't take a shit on the plane until I got to the hotel. <laughs> well, that was certainly top one. Take it away. Would you like me to finish the story, everybody? Yeah, I was wondering how they did the poop. No, so he said he didn't take a shit for the whole trip. He said, I hold the record for the most miles without taking a crap of three quarters of a million miles without a crap. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's got to be So that was the the story. One of the stories they told. There are quite a few others, and it's really a very interesting documentary. But anyway, it's time to hit the theme. There we go. Did you watch the one on Miami I sent you? No. Uh, anyway, uh, that's about it for this uh, evening. Uh, I thank everybody for being with me. Scott, thank you for waiting patiently and quietly in the dark. Charlie Wallace, thank you for being here to give us a black perspective on our racist president. Uh, Josh, always nice to have you here. Always intelligent comments. Uh, to counter those of unintelligent comments on the panel. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Thank you, uh, Tony. Thank you, uh, Phil. And finally, thank you, Kevin, for being with us. If uh, all of you would just give a big wave goodbye, I'll wave back at you. Okay, and there we go. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, 
We'll be back here again tomorrow night. Let me just get rid of the uh, citizen panel here. So the next show can use the uh, Skype lines. There we go. Uh, make myself invisible. Turn myself off. There we go. Okay. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. No, no Damien this week, but at 8.30 tomorrow night, Franchise MC with his little sports program, which will go on at 8.30. Uh, we'll see you again at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.